Hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going, going to be talking about exponents. So let's do it. This rule says, or I should say this problem says, the instructions say, use the product rule to simplify the expression and write your answer in exponential notation. Well, this is our chance to talk about some really basic stuff. These big numbers here at the bottom, the sevens, those sevens are called the bases. Notice that the bases are all the same. They're all the number seven. The little numbers, the raised numbers you're already familiar with, they're called exponents. Now, whenever you write something with exponents, it's called writing it with exponential notation. That's the word that we use, and so this is what my math lab wants you to do. They want you to use the product rule, and what the product rule says is that when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So what this is going to equal is 7, the base, raised to the power 5 plus 9 plus 7. Okay, now 5 plus 9 is 14 plus 7 is 21. So our answer will be 7 to the 21st power and that's how my math lab wants you to answer. They don't want you to calculate that. They want you to just come up with this answer. The product rule. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. Now for this problem, the instructions are exactly the same. Use the product rule to simplify the expression and write your answer in exponential notation. Here though, we have a different kind of base. Remember that uh, you put parentheses around something when you want to group it. That's one of the meanings of exponential notation. There, I had something on my microphone. Um, well, here our base is actually negative 5 with parentheses. So when you multiply like bases, they're both negative 5, the bases are both negative 5, you add the exponent. So our answer is going to be negative 5 raised to the 3 plus 2 power, and since 3 plus 2 is 5, we're going to have negative 5 to the 3 plus 2, and this is the way uh, that my math lab wants you to, oop, no it's not. This is the way that my math lab wants you to answer. Negative 5 to the fifth power. Let's try that again. Negative 5 to the fifth power. Okay. Now here we have another chance to use the product rule and to give our answer in exponential notation. What is the base? The base is x, x, x. All the same base. So I write the base and then I add the exponents. 4 plus 9 plus 5. 4 plus 9 is 13. 13 plus 5 is 18. So our answer will be x to the 18th power. And now, here we have the same instructions, but this is really going to be a multiplication problem. We're multiplying really four, four things here. We're multiplying negative 9 times <clears throat> x to the sixth times 8 times x to the seventh, which is going to be negative 9 times 8 times x to the sixth times x to the seventh. Now, 
Negative 9 times positive 8 is negative 72. x to the 6 times x to the 7 is x to the 6 plus 7, and 6 plus 7 is 13. So that would be our answer. All right, changing pages. We're using a slightly different rule here. Notice that we have a base raised to a power, and then it's raised to a power again. When you have this kind of situation, you write the base, and you multiply the exponents. 5 times 3 is 15, but let me write that out explicitly. Three to the fifteenth power will be our answer. Okay, when you're multiplying like bases, like with the sevens or the other problems on this page, you write the base once and you add the exponents. But if you have a base and you raise it to a power and you raise the whole thing to a power, this is what you do. Now, a similar use of that power rule, which is what it's called, is to do this. When you have numbers and variables inside parentheses, each one of those is actually raised to the first power. You don't see it because when something is raised to the first power, we don't bother to write it. So this is what we really have in the parentheses, 2 to the 1 x to the 1, y to the 1. And the whole thing is being raised to the 8th power. So what we're going to do is say 2 to the 1 times 8 times x to the 1 times 8 times y to the 1 times 8 so that our answer is going to be 2 to the 8, x to the 8, y to the 8. And that's the answer that my math lab wants you to give. Now here we have another use of the power rule. Okay, when you have a situation like this, the answer is going to be f to the 3, g to the 3. The 3, this is really f to the 1 over g to the 1, and what the 3 here does is it multiplies that one, and it multiplies that one. Now, when you have a problem like this, it's very much like the problem up here. What we're going to have here is 9 to the 1 times 2, because there's a 1 there, x to the 4 times 2, z to the 7 times 2, and so that will give us 81, probably no. Probably my math lab wants us to write it as 9 to the 2, x to the 8, z to the 14. I wonder if you put 81 if my math lab would mark it wrong. I bet it would take it. Ah, now here's a tricky problem. Any number raised to the 0 power equals 1. So here we have a base, negative 2, raised to the 0 power, it's 1. And then we're subtracting 9 raised to the 0 power. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So we'll have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Okay. 
Here we have something called the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is used when you have like bases and you're dividing. When you have like bases and you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. This is going to be 9, the base, to the 10 minus 3 power, which is 9, oh, no it's not, it's 9 to the 7th power, right there. Let me write that a little better. This is 9 to the 7th power. And that's how you should answer, because 9 to the 7th power is really big. Better just to leave it 9 to the 7th. Okay, now this is a mean looking problem. Now we have two parts here. We have this part and we have this part. All right, so when I take this 3 and I multiply it into here, I will get 3 to the third power, x to the 4 times 3, which is 12th power, y to the 4 times 3, which is 12, and z to the 1 times 3, which is 3, and yeah, I want to be able to see over there. Okay, now we're also going to multiply the 2 into there and into there. So we're going to have times x to the 5 times 2 power, which is 10, and y to the 1 times 2 power, which is 2. Okay, we're almost done here. Here we have like bases, x and x, and we have like bases, y and y. Meanwhile, 3 to the third power is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27. So we'll have 27 x to the 12 plus 10, y to the 12 plus 2, and z to the third. It's not doing much of anything. All right, so that'll be 27 times x to the 22nd power, times y to the 14th power, times z to the third power. There it is right there. And this would be D if it had printed properly. So your answer to this problem would be D. Okay. We'll continue on the next tape. It's not a tape. It's a video recording. Talk to you soon.